So the previous botting video got a lot of good response, so here's the second part. Note that all the code is available in the description. In the last botting tutorial, we went through how to use PyAuto GUI and a bunch of other functions to use images and pixels as inputs to perform an action. Today I'll show you how to take an image of text and or numbers, store them in a variable, and work with them. I'll also teach you a bunch of keyboard and mouse tricks you can do like click and drag, write text, and keyboard combinations. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is go to this link. Scroll down and download Tesseract OCR for 64-bit windows. Run the installer that you just downloaded and copy the destination path and paste it anywhere you can remember where you left it, like your friend's chat that you use as a clipboard. Alright, so at this point you're going to need two new packages. Run cmd as administrator and enter these two commands. Alright, now create a folder on your desktop, name it whatever you want and create a new text file. Give it a name and end it with the .py extension. Note that for this to work you have to go to the view tab and enable these checkboxes. Right click the file, edit, edit with idle and paste in this code that's available in the description. Note that you are going to have to change this path to the destination folder you installed Tesseract on. It should look like this in the end. Alright, so now that everything is ready, let's take an image of something to use as a demonstration. Okay, so for testing purposes, open a new YouTube window, press Shift Windows S and take a screenshot of text. I chose to take a screenshot of this, which shows the amount of views a video has. I then open Microsoft Paint, paste it in, crop it, and save it as text to convertpng in the same folder as the Python script. Saving it in the same folder is important, or the demonstration won't work. Now that we have the picture ready and saved in the same folder as the Python script, we need to open that image in the script and store it in a variable. To do that, write the following line. This will open the file named text to convertpng which is the screenshot we just took, and store it in the img variable. After that's done, all you have to do is write output equal pytesseract.image to string of img. This will use pytesseract's image to string function to convert the contents of the variable img into text that will be stored in the output variable. If we now put a simple print output after this and run the script by pressing run, run module, or, or by simply pressing F5, you can see that the script analyzes the image and prints out text correctly. If you remember what we did in the last video, you can also use pyauto.gui to store an image in the variable img instead of a file with this line. Note that to be able to use this, you have to first download pyauto.gui with pip install pyauto.gui and then put import pyauto.gui in the top section of the code. For more on this, please watch the first video. Alright, so now it's time to show you how to work with the output. Let's say you're playing a game and have this text which represents coordinates on a map. This is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. I created this image for demonstration purposes using Microsoft Paint for this example. I named it coordinates.png and saved it in the same folder as the Python file. If I were to run the exact same code we just made, we would only get this piece of string. But let's say I want to be able to work with the x and the y value, how do I do that? So here you can notice that these two parts are separated by a comma, so I can use the split function to separate the contents by using that comma. Simply enter this to the code. This will split the contents inside the output variable based on the comma. After splitting, the output will look like this. This means that the value 9822 will be stored in output of 0 and 5012 in output of 1. You can test this by adding a print output 0, print output 1. After the split, we will see this as the output. Now if you try to do some math with these outputs, it won't work since this is technically still text. If you want to perform math operations, you have to turn them into numbers. To do this, simply use the int function. For example, if you want the sum of slot 0 and 1 of output, you would write something like this total equal int of output 0 plus int of output 1. This will add the int of output 0 to the int of output 1 and store it in the variable total. You can also add a print total to confirm that the value is correct. Also, an interesting thing to note is that if you want to convert text in a different language like French for example, you can add the language parameter after the variable storing the image. What does it do? I have no clue. And that's all for this part of the tutorial. If you already watched the first tutorial, there's no need to do this installation. If not, then open cmd as admin and run these commands. Once that's done, paste in these four lines. Alright, let's begin with the keyboard part. So first we add the loop while1. This will play the code underneath it forever. Inside of the while loop, write keyboard.waitesc. This will pause the code until you press escape. After that, create a new string my string and put the value to my name is Jeff. This will store the text my name is Jeff into the variable my string. Then write keyboard.write my string. This will write the contents of the variable my string as if you were typing it with your own keyboard. Note that you don't need to have a variable in here as a value, so you could just have it in here like this. And then finally write keyboard.press and release enter. 
which is going to press and release the enter key, sending the message. Alright, now run the code, go to some random chat, you're gonna get banned in for spam, and keep hitting the escape key. And there you go, every single time you press escape, you're gonna be sending a pointless message to wherever you want. Additionally, if you want to do keyboard combinations, you can use this code. As you can see, it works with multiple keys. PyAuto GUI also has very similar keyboard functionality. For example, this is the same as this, and this is the same as this. You can choose whatever you like, but I prefer keyboard since in my experience it runs faster. There's also a very neat little feature called add abbreviation. It looks like this. If you open a Python shell, write import keyboard and keyboard.add abbreviation, what do you mean, what do you mean? If you write the shorter what do you mean anywhere and press space, what you wrote will be replaced by the full what do you mean. I have absolutely no clue why you would use this, but I mean I guess it could be useful for some of you. I also want to note that some games and programs block key combinations since they happen pretty much instantly. Let's say you want to do the control alt delete combinations, you will write it like this. What this does is it presses the control key, waits for 0.1 seconds, presses shift, waits 0.1, presses escape, waits 0.1, and then releases all of the keys at once. This will simulate a tap and hold, since you are holding down the key for a little bit before releasing it. And that's all I had for the keyboard part, let's move to the mouse drag. In the last tutorial, I showed you how to click using Win32 API, and dragging is very similar to clicking. Based in this code, I'll explain how it works in a second. The first three lines are libraries we're going to use. After the libraries, we have a 2 second sleep that prevents the script from dragging the mouse immediately after starting. This line will move the cursor 500 pixels to the right from the top left of the screen and 500 pixels down. We then add a time.sleep to give the computer some time to breathe, since clicks sometimes don't register if they happen too quickly. This line simulates the left click down event, which is the same as you clicking and holding your mouse. We then give it some time to breathe as well. Let's say we now want to drag it to 500x 300y, which is 200 pixels up from the initial position. We would then write Win32 API set cursor pause 500 300. This will move the cursor to x 500 y 300 while the mouse is still holding down left click. We give it some time to breathe as well, and then we finally release the left click with Win32 API mouse event mouse left up. And that's how you simulate a drag on a mobile game, for example. And that's all. I hope this video helped you, and I really hope it didn't disappoint in terms of quality. I tried using a new editing program, hopefully that ended up alright. I made a discord server so that you can come and ask me questions if you have any bugs or personal requests that you would like me to do. The invite link is in the description. Anyways, thank you guys for the support and I hope you will benefit from what these botting videos bring you.